Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are beginning a playthrough of The Seventh Continent. We're returning to the continent. We're going to be playing What Comes Up Must Come Down. I'm going to do a curse out of this box. I'm really excited to do this. This game is one of my favorite games of all time, and we're going to go right back into The Seventh Continent. Now, this video is going to be a setup and intro video. I'm going to show you the characters we're going to do, and I'm also going to show you how to set up the game, because some people out there may just be starting the game for the first time, and I want to show them exactly kind of how this game is set up. Now, if you're looking for a playthrough of this game, I did one on my channel. I'm going to put a link to it right up here. So go ahead and check that out if you want to. I will warn you, it was actually the second one I've ever done. So I've learned a lot since then, and I'm excited to come back to the Seventh Continent. Now I've gone ahead and we've got our Seventh Continent playmat out, so we're all set. Next we're gonna put out our action deck holder, I'm gonna put it right there, and then we're also gonna put out our discard pile holder. Now the thing about the discard pile holder is it has two different actions that can be used during the game. So I can either use this one where it says, oh, let's see if I can read it here. Table turning poltergeist and the like are but a bunch of nonsense when a grave can be seen on your terrain card, you may apply the following effect at most once per action. And if we can use a dig or pray action card, we're able to, the active player may discard a card with the word specter that they have just revealed without applying any related effects. In the, that case, they must immediately take a 666 card. The other option we have is this one, which says, as thought for those who died, on the first expedition. When a grave can be seen on your train card, I'm allowed to do a prey action with a locked a skill of one and I need one success. If I'm doing that and I succeed, each involved character may discard a number of cards with the keyword will from their hand and or inventory. For each card discarded this way, randomly take two cards from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. If you fail, you draw a 666 card. Now you have the choice between each either one. I'm gonna choose this one. This really hasn't come into play very often for me, but if you think that this one is way better than the other one, go ahead and tell me, and I have no problem switching that before our playthrough starts. But for now, I'm gonna put our discard holder right there. Next, we're gonna take our action deck that we find in the box. Now, I've actually sleeved my entire action deck using the premium sleeves that we got from the seventh continent during the Kickstarter. I use that for all the cards that I have to shuffle, which is like my action deck and some of the other things. So we're gonna put those right there. Now I wanna make sure everybody understands. Now I'm trying to explain this game as somebody that hasn't played this before. You're gonna be looking for all the cards that are, look like this with blue hand symbol up here and just have little information about what is there and some stars or other symbols on the side. What you wanna make sure is not to mix in any of the cards that have like a number up here. These are advanced cards and you're gonna gain these later on through the playthrough. Next, we're going to take our four basic curse cards and add them to our action deck. So we're going to put them right there. Then we have to decide what curse we're going to do. And I got a lot of people asking me to do this one. So we're going to do a Prison of the Clouds. We're going to start by reading a little synopsis here, look at the back card and find out about this bird. And then we're going to go ahead and add our curse card, the Prison of Clouds, which I love the art. It's so good to our action deck. And I'm going to put it right there. So our intro states, a prison of clouds. Norbert, stop feeding that damn bird. Those seeds might caw save our skins one of these days. Sorry, Captain, but Jojoba seems awfully pale this morning. This bizarre exchange startles you from a deep sleep. You find yourself covered with a thin layer of snow and frozen to the bone. A black bird with a yellow beak is hopping about on, a, on the white ground repeating the same phrases in impeccable English. Looking around, you wonder in disbelief at how and why you ended up here. It says at the bottom here, no matter how many curses you are playing with, begin the adventure by putting a 677 card into play. Each player places their figure on it. So that's gonna be our curse. So we're gonna put this curse in our satchel along with our actual satchel. On the back, then that's what this symbol means. It means add it to your journal satchel thing. It says, a prison of clouds. Norbert, shoo it away and hide the seeds. Yes, Captain. And now anytime we see a flag like this when we're making skill checks, or if it tells us to pick a card that has this symbol on it, we're gonna add 13 to this card. All right, so we're gonna put that with everything. 
and we're gonna put it right inside this journal satchel that they gave us. This is absolutely sweet. Check this thing out. All right, so this basically I'm gonna slide our satchel journal in here, and then we're also gonna take our clue card. We're gonna turn it this way because everything on the back of this clue, none of this is really gonna help us, but we do have to remember to take a 677 card. And we're gonna slide it right in there. So I have sleeved both of these cards with a different sleeve. I use Mayday sleeves for these. So I, they, they're a thinner quality, but they work just as well. And so we have these in our journal. We're gonna put this journal aside. And if we have to add anything else to it, we'll go ahead and do that. Next, we have to choose our characters. We're gonna play with two. I have decided again, since we're playing the what comes up must come down, we're gonna use two of these characters from that actual game. We're gonna use Amelia Earhart, and we're also gonna use Anjka Paddle. I probably pronounced that wrong, I apologize. I'll work on pronunciation of that. I, I, I'll get it better, I promise. So each one of these does have a little power they can use, and all of them have this power right here. Along with this powers, they also come with their own set of action cards. So these five cards that she has are gonna go into your action deck, along with these five cards. Now when these characters take actions, they're gonna be drawing cards from this deck to see if they succeed or not succeed. And if you ever draw a card that has a symbol of the character, if that character, for example, say Amelia did the action and she pulled like one of these cards, she could choose to keep this card. And I'll explain more of that as we play. But if she had done the action and pulled this card, this card would automatically have to be discarded because it's not one of her cards. I hope that makes sense. So if we look at Amelia Earhart, it says right up here, during the cost step of an action you are involved in, you may discard two action cards, two of these cards that have these blue symbols on them. Of course, you can't draw this one. Let's maybe make a little bit better example. There we go, look there, that one's got a blue symbol. You can discard two of those cards from your hand in order to randomly draw one additional card from the discard pile. If you do, and one of those or more curse cards are revealed during the result step, take a seven 50 card. Okay, so it's a good risk reward type concept. So say we needed to get three successes and you're going to know if you get successes by the amount of stars you have on the side. So say we drew these two cards or something to do that. We could discard two cards from our hand to instead draw one additional card. So say then we draw this card. Now we have our three successes because we have three stars. I hope that makes sense. More of it will become clear as we play, but just know that we have Amelia Earhart and now all the characters can do this. If you move to a terrain card where there is an explorer or a fire figure, it's at negative one and I believe that stacks. So if you had a figure on a fire token and you wanted to move to that square, it's gonna cost you two less using that type of action. Next we have, I'm gonna say it's Annika. If I'm wrong, please let me know and I'll work on it. It says you may discard one card with the keyword stealth from your hand or your inventory to choose one card with the keyword aggressiveness in your discard pile and add it to your hand. So again, I'm gonna show you what that means. Each one of these cards, of course, except that one, has a keyword at the bottom. So I could discard this keyword, this card with the keyword stealth and I could grab a card with like aggressiveness from my discard pile and add it back to my hand. So that's what her power is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place these off to the side over here. So that way, if she, as I gain cards, I can put them next to their characters. I'm not gonna put these in the journal, otherwise I won't remember what people have what. The next thing we have to do is determine what expansions we plan to use. And actually, to tell you the truth, I'm using every one of them. Now, just because I'm using all the expansions, for example, some of them back here, the Forbidden Sanctuary and the Swamp of Madness, a lot of these don't come into play unless you're actually doing those curses. But I just want everybody to understand that all of these cards are actually inside my box. So there's a chance at pulling stuff from these and especially these kind of things, they're probably not gonna come into play because similar to what our crow showed us, it had that little flag with a plus 13. That'd be the only way I believe you're able to move into these. Now don't quote me on that, I haven't played, I haven't actually done everything about this game. So there are some things that I still have never seen, but we are using Fear the Devourers, we're using Path of Repentance, and Facing the Elements. These actually will take effect during our game because these are part of the normal play. Also, I'm using Comfort Creatures and the Flying Roots. These are new to this, to the What Comes Up Must Come Down uh, game. And to do that, one of them actually says the Flying Roots right here. It says, if you choose to play with this expansion, shuffle the four The Strangest Encounter action cards into the action deck before the game begins. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have all four of them right here. So I'm just gonna shuffle these right into this action deck and put them right there. 
Now on the bottom, it does show something that's a little new to this expansion. It says Mastery X. So if you draw X cards, where say this is a two here, a red two, if you draw two cards or less in the action deck during the cost step of an action and it is successful, I may shuffle some or all of those cards back in the action deck during the skill step. So what that means is again, say we're going to go ahead and say we have to draw three or two cards and get two successes. If we're able to, and it has that red symbol next to it, if I draw two cards and get two successes, I didn't this time, but if I would have, I could have taken, uh, gone ahead and taken advantage of the mastery X or that mastery rule here. Now I do want you to be aware the only one we're not playing with is the pocket watch. I don't have this expansion inside the game. I Basically all it says is to add this to your satchel. I'm choosing not to. And just because I'm using those expansions doesn't mean that I add in the curse cards. If I want to add in the curse cards, I can. You can do multiple curses during a game. By all means, you could even try to do all these if you wanted to. I think that's a little out of control. We're just going to be doing the one, and that's that clouds one. So if we're able to get through the prison of clouds, that's great. If I wanted to, I could add more, but I'm not going to. Now with our action deck built and our characters decided, I'm gonna put it over here. Now I will go ahead and shuffle this. I'm not gonna have you watch me shuffle this on screen. There's no point in that. We're then gonna take our handy dandy rules reference and action guide here. This is that every character person gets one of these. It tells you exactly how to go through the steps of doing an action. It also talks about turns. And on the back, it shows you a list of all the different actions that you may see on the cards as you're playing. And it also shows you the consequences that happen based on certain actions that you do. And over here are resources. These are gonna show you the kind of resources you're gonna see on cards. And if you see these on cards, you're gonna be able to attempt to craft these as well. So let's see if I can find a couple just to demonstrate this. So for example, say we get the net. Up here it's gonna show you a couple resources and you're gonna see these on cards and you're also gonna see these in other places as well. Now if those are present on the card when you're attempting to make this, you're gonna have, you're gonna be able to pay less to have that happen and you'll see how that works during the playthrough. But I just want you to be aware that that is on this little reference sheet here, which it's a really good reference sheet. I always keep it handy when I'm playing, no matter how many times I've played, because there are times sometimes I make mistakes. No, everybody doesn't make mistakes. Yes, I always make mistakes. <laughs> and if I do make mistakes, please let me know so I can make sure to correct those. And I've prattled on long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and get card 677, and we're going to go ahead and put that out there. So now our card told us to put out 677. Now I'm not gonna keep sliding this back in and out during the playthrough, I just wanna show you how this works. So as you can see, you've got a whole bunch of little cards in here and they're all tabbed through. So you're gonna go to 677 in here. Now you're gonna look, there's multiple, there's a white one and there's a green one. Now in the rules, it tells you not to take white cards unless you're told to. So we're gonna take our green card. We're gonna pull that out and we're gonna read it. It says, you find yourself on a rocky plateau covered in a thick layer of snow. It must be 300 feet wide with a precipice filled with thick fog beyond. The bitterly cold temperature combined with the altitude makes it quite difficult to breathe. So now we're going to go ahead and turn our card over. Now I'm going to go through this on the playthrough. I'll talk about how all this works. But for now, we're going to put our card down. This is where we're going to put all our guys for the beginning of our playthrough. Now the way you denote your characters is there's three different ways. One, we could use this little token that they gave us. So I've got one for Amelia Earhart and one for Annika. If I wanna put those out, I could do that. That's one option. The other option is we have these little standees that I could put inside our standee thing and I can put them out there like this. And they would go ahead and stand up on the board like that. The final one is they do come with these little miniatures and they're really little miniatures. I mean, they're, they're way tinier than anything I've normally ever painted. So I haven't actually painted any of these up because they're just so small. So these are the three different options we have to put our characters out there. We can use those two things or this. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can take a look. So now I want you guys to tell me which one you think would be the easiest to follow in this game? Would it be easiest to follow this token? Would it be easy to follow these standees like this? Or do you want me to use the miniatures? I don't care which ones you decide. I just want to make sure it's easy for everyone to understand where people are going and what people are doing. So please let me know in the comments below which token system you'd like me to use to go ahead and represent our characters. So the last thing we need to do is make sure we have room for our characters. Now, as we play, we're going to be gaining blue cards. We're going to be creating items and we're also be getting green cards too. So I got to make sure I have enough room for everything. Now with a two player game, we're going to look at our satchel card and it'll show us how many things we're able to take. So according to a two player game, we can have three green cards, 
three blue cards and we can create up to three items that are going to be three cards long. You're going to see how all of that works during the playthrough, but I want to make sure you know that there should be enough room for your characters so they can gain cards, items, and also some green cards. Also, I'm going to give our characters some dice. They're each going to get three sets of dice. This is the durability that you're going to be able to use for your items. You're not actually going to be rolling these dice. Well, at least I haven't found a place where you roll these dice. Who knows? It's the seventh continent. Anything can happen. So there could be a chance for rolling them. But for now, these are usually these are used just to denote how much durability a certain item has. So we're only able to carry three items or stacks of items. So we want to only we only need three dice. And that's it. We're ready to start the seventh continent. This has been a quick intro setup video. I know it's not been super detailed, but a lot of the game is going to be found out while we play. Also, like I said, don't forget to check out my other playthrough if you're looking for a more in-depth setup video. Now, in the comments below, don't forget to tell me, do you like to see this token? Would you like to see the standees? Or would you like to see the actual character models out there on the map? And with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the setup video. Are you excited as I am to get to the seventh continent? I know I've been waiting a long time to get back to this. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell symbol and you'll know when the next video comes out. Like I said, leave anything in the comments below, especially which one of these tokens do you want me to use? And do you approve of the characters I've decided to choose? And what about my discard pile? Do you like the way it is or does, do you really think it doesn't matter that much and we're okay either way? Or do you want me to switch it? I'm ready to start another epic playthrough. And if you're as excited as I am, then I need you to meet me at the table.